Well, good morning, and welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irv Risch, and today I'm going to, I picked a subject from my podcast that not many people like to talk about, war, death, and misery, they all go together. Well, death is part of life. But man has brought so much misery on himself. You know, it's said that uh, there are no winners in war. And it's true. Nobody wins. Everybody loses. Everybody's a loser. Only the death have seen the end of war. Quote by Plato. Well, the reason I picked this subject is because I personally have been uh, very close to uh, wars in my lifetime. I have a brother that's 20 years older than I was, or was 20 years older than I was, fought on the beaches of Normandy. Uh, received the Purple Heart. He had a lot of other medals. But he told me stories. I told I told him, I said, Jerry, you ought to write some of this down. And he never did. He would have nightmares, he says. Uh, and he didn't even want to talk about some of the things. But I remember one thing he told me. You know, in war, when you're uh shooting at somebody from a distance uh it doesn't affect you until you get into hand-to-hand combat and a lot of world war ii was hand-to-hand combat we had um invasions like he was on the beaches of normandy and he says when you look a man straight in the face when you're running a bayonet through him you never forget that look on that man's face it's the look of death you kill the man for the sake of war now i know that we drop bombs uh there was bombs dropped on uh nagasaki Hiroshima, uh, and these bombs devastated everything. If it didn't kill people, there was misery all over. Well, I think that, uh, I think it was Einstein that said that I don't know what weapons will be used in World War III, but in World War IV, it'll be sticks and stones. That's all that'll be left. (laughs) Probably is a lot of truth in that, isn't it? Well, I had uh, an uncle, Uncle Pete. He was in the Army. I had a cousin, uh, Bobby, who was in the Navy. I had uh, uh, my dad's brother, George, who was in World War I. Uh, there, there, you know, there was been war from the very beginning. And if you ask the question, where does war come from? You know, the Bible has the answer says you want and you have not (laughs) it's all about greed it's all about wanting something somebody else has it's all about control it's all about wanting something that you don't have bible had the answer usually does Well, thinking about war, 
I was in the military. I'm a vet. I served a couple of terms. And when I was over on Iwo Jima, I seen the aftermath of war. When that island was attacked and there was a lot of lives lost on the beach, everybody remembers the famous raising of the flag on uh, Mount Saribachi on Iwo Jima. I was on Mount Saribachi. I watched the raising of the flag at a ceremony. Yes, that was a historical moment. They claimed a victory. They claimed they captured the, the island, which they did. But when all is said and done, all those lives were lost in, in the aftermath. There were uh, caves on that island. There were still bodies intact in the 1950s. Uh, there was old grenades, trip lines, uh, and there was, uh, the, the island was, had a sulfur deposit because it was a volcanic ash. It was called the Black Pearl of the Pacific. And sulfur was a preservative. Even though the clothes and everything were rotten on the bodies, there were still bodies intact. Uh, but after all it was said and done, the United States gave the island back to the Japanese. It belonged to them. We wanted, with the death of a lot of young men, and then we just gave it back. War was over, no need to have the island. It was a strategic point that was needed during the war. So I remember all these things. There are young people out there that have never experienced uh, the misery of war. I can remember when the war was over, when World War II became, was over. I remember seeing pictures of my brother. In fact, I probably still got them. My brother, arm in arm with a sailor over in France. D-Day, the, uh, the Germans had given up and we won the war. Like I said, there's no winners in war. If you had to ask all those that have given their lives in war, they would tell you it's not worth it. Only the dead have seen the end of war. Now, men talk about peace. I don't know if there's ever been peace. I don't think there has. Right now, there's a war going on. There's a war going on someplace in the world every minute. Well, the only time man is ever going to see peace is when the Prince of Peace comes and sets up his kingdom and it's run according to God's way, not man's way. Yes. There will be justice. God is a just God. And someday, people will have to answer for the deeds they've done in the body. Now, is it right for a Christian to go to war? There are those that uh, say no. There's those that say, well, you got to uh, serve your country that you're in. I don't care how you look at it. They're all wrong. War is wrong. Man should never have a right to kill another man. We are made in the image of God. 
And how can we kill another person who's made in the image of God? Well, we could have a debate right now on capital punishment. Is it right for capital punishment? God gave the government for our benefit. And we are to punish those who have broken the laws of the land. Now, is there true justice anymore? I'd say no. Right now, whereas we're getting towards the end times, we're, we're looking at the world where we look at good as bad and bad as good. Totally the opposite. Totally the opposite. I kind of got a runny nose today. Yes. The world is all mixed up. The world is all upside down. People fight for wealth. You know, I've been through life. I've never really been rich, but I've never really been poor. Oh yeah, I've lived in poverty. I'm like the Apostle Paul. I lived with plenty and I live, learned to live without. God has always taken care of me. Tells me not to be anxious. You know, God will feed the birds of the air. Takes care of me. I don't need another man's wealth. I don't need power. I don't need any of this. Once you have the Lord Jesus Christ, that's all you need. I'm content. And I will be until the day he takes me home. There'll always be wars. There'll always be death. There'll always be misery, sickness. This is all part of the curse. And I believe war actually is all part of the curse. It's because of the fall of man. Well, that's kind of my take on, on war, death, and misery. Subject that nobody wants to talk about, but it's there. It's in the world. It's been in the world forever. Well, it's at the beginning of time. But someday, the Prince of Peace will come. And we will have true peace in the world. But even that will only last for a thousand years. Then the devil, who has deceived man right from the very beginning, will be let loose out of his dungeon in the bottomless pit. And he will deceive the world again. And then there'll be the final battle, the battle of Armageddon. The battle of battles. Well, I know how everything ends. I read the book <laughs> and I looked at the end of the book. I hope you pick up the Bible also and read it. And not only read the end, but read God's perfect plan from beginning to end. The Lord said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. God knew what was going to happen from the very beginning. And yet, he created man in his image. Even though he knew men were going to fall. And that this was going to bring all this death and misery on us. God allows things to happen to teach us. Without God, we cannot run our lives and not run them the way God wants us to run them. There was only one perfect human being, 
and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. He turned the other cheek. And when they crucified him, you know what his words were? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Wow. Beautiful words. Christ will forgive you. Think for a moment of the thief on the cross. He railed at the Lord before this happened, him and the other thief. But then he had a change of heart. He kept looking at Christ as they hung on a cross. And he looked at the other thief and he says, you know, we're paying for what we've done. But this man has done nothing wrong. He looked at the Lord and he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The Lord looked back at this thief on the cross. And he said, today you will be with me in paradise. I'm going to ask you. The moment you die, will you be with the Lord in paradise? The thief on the cross is, and it didn't depend on his baptism or what church he went to or uh, if he helped little old ladies across the street. His faith was in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Plain and simple, folks. I hope you understand it. I know I do. And someday I'm going to be with him. So remember, we live in a world that's full of death, misery, wars, all these terrible things going on, and things are getting worse. In fact, there was one time in history where God, it said that God was grieved in his heart that he had even created man because there was so much evil and wickedness. And he was going to destroy the whole world. And then I come to my favorite verse in the Bible. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I tell you, Irv found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And if you have not found grace, you better be on your knees asking God for his grace. Well, got to go. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to my podcast. I do try to keep them short and to the point, but I kind of go off in left field. (sighs) Bye for now. God bless.